Grace and peace. God bless you. Welcome back to Soteria Prophetic Ministries. I'm your host, Delisa Fields, and we're going to pick up on um, uh, sensiti- uh, season sensitivity. Um, I kind of want to stay there for a little bit and um, encourage and inspire those of you who may have been feeling frustrating. And let me just say before I get started that I appreciate the feedback that I received from our first podcast on season sensitivity. Uh, many of you guys were enlightened, you were encouraged and refreshed by the word. Some of you said, you know, I received answers. I just didn't know what <coughs> God was expecting from me. Excuse me. And um, I received answers. You know, things made sense. And that's what the word of God does, right? The entrance of the word of God brings light. So we, we thank God for that. So today, what I'm going to focus on for a little bit is the preparation process. And, and you know, that's a word. I don't think we clearly understand. I honestly don't think we really understand what the process or the preparation process. Um, there are many processes, but I'm going to talk about the preparation process in particular um, in terms of being sensitive to your season, understanding your season and knowing what is required of you. Because many times God releases that word or we receive that word and we're ready for what God is going to do. We're ready to go to the nations and ready to go somewhere <laughs> and um but i think we fail to um consider what the preparation looks like once you receive the word and we talked about joseph yesterday uh in the, i hate to say yesterday but in the previous podcast um we talked about we talked about a lot of people we talked about samuel we, we just talked about a lot of people but you know in with joseph in particular Remember, we mentioned how he received the word through through dreams and visions that he's going to be, you know, the head of his family and he's going to be this ruler, this great ruler. Um, and then there was the preparation for that season. So understand that once you receive the word or you receive the insight that there is a season of productivity or increase or prosperity or relationship or healing or whatever, understand that that season comes after your preparation process has been completed um case in point in the natural and i think i alluded to this on my very first um podcast which uh didn't record very well but i talked about how in our seasons those of you uh americans that i'm listening to uh that are listening to me uh we move from uh what winter spring summer fall so you've got that some uh spring and you've got that fall that prepares or it transitions the the atmosphere or the region um <clears throat> from uh one extreme temperature to another we don't move from winter to summer i mean i listen your body your natural physical body has to be able to adapt has to be able to adapt from uh extreme cold temperatures to extremely hot can you imagine the shock your body would go through moving from <clears throat> excuse me a temperature let's say let's say 30 degrees to 90 i mean those of you with with medical backgrounds you 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 know exactly what i'm saying your body needs time to transition it needs time to acclimate itself to you know this this impending and upcoming season so this is the same thing in the natural many times we complicate it and you know it's really not that hard you know it's really not that hard um what you see in the natural these there are spiritual laws that govern that as well and we can learn a lot from that um so in the natural realm where in terms of weather forecasting and, and all of that you've got winter spring summer fall well, the same thing applies. You need a spring or you need a fall be- right before your season, um, you know, comes in. Um, so there are things that you want to do in, in our natural fall season. What are we doing? Pulling, we're packing away our summer clothes and, and, <clears throat> you know, pulling out our jackets and, and keeping our eyes on the coats and boots, right? It's not quite time for that yet, but we know it's coming. So, you know, the very same thing applies. And so I want to bring your attention to Esther, uh, the whole book. It's only, what, four chapters, I think. Um, the whole book of Esther, but more, in, in particular, how God prepared her. Um, how, how God, and that's such a, well, you know, y'all guys know I love the word of God, all of it. Um, <clears throat> but God is never mentioned in the book of Esther, however we see his hand. He never even speaks. 
but we see his hand. So if you want to read something uh, about process, I mean, you, my God, you know, she, her, you, she's a good book to read. Her book is a good book to read. So you have this young woman who begins her life for the most part as an orphan. Now I'm going to stop right there for a moment because for most people that would, they would write their own benediction right there oh i my mother never raised me my dad never raised me i never you know had a christmas or a birthday or, or whatever that story is and we all have a story okay um my point is don't you know i, I said this years ago don't put a period where god put a comma you may be in an orphan season you may be orphaned in relationships you may be orphaned in finances you may be orphaned in family or, or whatever you may have a you may be in a season where um you feel abandoned you feel alone you feel neglected you feel dropped like Mephibosheth. you feel uh rejected you know what I'm, th- that happens and and you know that's life uh people of god there there uh, you know i was telling some of my colleagues because there's a lot going on at work but i said we've got to understand how this life thing works and when you can understand it and you can make sense of it, then you can put a plan in place to deal with it and, and move past it. But if you allow everything, and I don't know who this is for because I feel the prophetic coming. If you allow everything that comes your way to totally take you out and totally take you down, my friends, you're going to have a, a very miserable life experience. Because that's what it boils down to. This is a life experience. OK, I, I talked about in the previous co- po- podcast about experiential knowledge. There are things that you cannot learn in a book or in a classroom. There are things that you will only learn by virtue of experience. So don't allow your experience to dictate your destiny or your purpose or the plans of God that he has for your life. Don't allow that to happen. So moving forward, this woman began her life for the most part without both of her parents having been raised by um Mordecai and we thank God for the Mordecai's the male and female Mordecai's so having raised having been raised by someone who's not her her uh parent so um it comes to the point to where you have to acknowledge that this is my experience but this does not define you know my destiny it does not define who I am. And so this woman, I'm still talking about preparation. I want to, I want to ride this for a minute and really get some of you to thinking, especially those of you who have not had the best of childhoods, which I don't know anybody who's had, you can have both parents or no parents or one parent and still have a tough childhood. Right. Um, it is, that's a whole nother situation. However, um, she had for the most part a, a, a rough childhood, but you know what? It, in the, it, that orphan, that orphan girl without a mommy and without a daddy had, a queen inside of her. And that's what I want you to realize. I want you to recognize this woman, this orphan girl without a mommy and without a daddy had a queen inside of her. And I, I feel the presence of God because, Oh, I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. There's some of you right now. You may not be that little girl without a mommy or daddy. You may be grown without a mommy or daddy or, 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 or without a set one to love you and to nurture you and, and to supply that affection that you need. And, and you may look at your life as if to say, this is it. I'll never come out of this. I'll never grow past this. I'll never experience. Can you imagine Esther not knowing what that, that, you know, what that experience would, that family experience would be like? You know, Mordecai did an excellent job. God commends him for that and God rewards him for that. But, you know, it was not, it was not her, her total experience. That wasn't it. And I need to encourage somebody. This is not it for you. You may be in an orphan season, you know, you may be in a season where, you know, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Hagar, Lahai, uh, Roi, and she went when, when Abraham cast her and Ishmael away, she went to Lahai Roi, the place where God sees me because she felt orphaned. You can feel orphaned. You can feel abandoned. My God, you can feel, you know, and listen, some of us have been orphaned by people and some of us have orphaned ourselves from people. You know, because many of us like to play the victim role. Oh, nobody loves me. Nobody cares me. But there's some of us who have, who, you know, who invited orphan spirits. That's a whole nother topic, Holy Ghost. All right. Either way, whether it happened to you or you happened it to you, either way, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in you, my friend. You may have or have had an orphan experience. But that's not the summation 
That's not the, that, that's not the final verdict concerning your life. There was a queen locked inside of Esther and all she had to do was survive. All God is saying to you to do is to survive, get through it, pray through it, fast through it. Somebody, James Fortune, go through it, grow through it, get through it, cry through it, crawl warfare through it, get through it. Connect with those people who have the go through it anointing. And you know, some people have the anointing to kill you dead. And, you know, I know that I said the same thing, but there's some people that listen, they see you going through something and they'll dig the hole and put you in it. Like Job's friends. Oh, you must have did something wrong. You done plucked God's nerves. And that wasn't the case. But there are people when you're in seasons like that, that God will put in your life. When Esther was having an orphan season, a true orphan season, God put Mordecai there. I did a message way back when. Don't kill your Mordecai or don't something. I don't know. I can't remember. It was, I don't know. Praise God. But, you know, God will put someone there and don't allow your orphanhood. Okay. To, to drive the person's scent to carry you in that season. Don't allow your pain to wound someone else. It can happen. They say hurt people, hurt people. Don't allow your pain to wound someone else. Esther had a queen inside of her and it was Mordecai's job to prepare her. Nobody knew what her destiny was going to be. No, it wasn't revealed. Come on. But she kept moving. She survived. She went through whatever she had to go through. She went through it. And that's a part of the preparation process, people of God, that God wants you to, to, to get. He wants you to understand that there may be some unsettling, uncomfortable disconcerting things that will happen in your preparation season. It may be orphanhood. It may be, it may be worse. It, you know, may not be as well. It may, you know, it, it it's going to be something. I'll tell you that, but it's going to prepare you. It's going to skill you and gift you and tool you with what you need for your queendom or your kingdom guys who are listening. You understand what I'm saying for your place to reign for your place. The same way that Joseph had to learn from Potiphar. How are you going to learn Egypt? You know, there are many of you, I'm going here, I'm going here, but you've never, you, there's somebody that's where you're going needs to introduce you there. Did you hear what I said? The place where you're going, you need somebody, there's someone set in place to introduce you to where you got to go. All right. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. That was a lot. I've got to start my work day. So I pray that I've said something to inspire you and to motivate you and challenge you. Get you to thinking and get you to dig and search these scriptures. Get into the word. Go and read the book of Esther. There's only four chapters you can do it on your lunch break. And and look at look pay pay particular attention to the first chapter. All right. If you don't have time to read the whole thing, do Esther one and Esther four, and then go back later on and get and look at the middle. But I want you to look at how she started, because I want to remove the excuses that many of us are using. I can't do it because who said that? Who told you that lie? Yes, you can. If God said this is for, this is what you're going to do, you'll do it. You know, you, listen, there are no excuses. <laughs> God expects you to do what he told you to do. So acknowledge, yeah, I've been an orphan in whatever capacity that means for you. But that was what I needed to be where I am. And that's what I need for where I'm going. I could talk a whole lot about that. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. In the meanwhile, you all have a blessed and prosperous day. May all go well with you. I pray God blesses the works of your hands. Let your family be blessed. Your finances be blessed. Your health be blessed. And if you have pets, I pray God blesses them too. All right, grace and peace. We love you. Until next time, God bless you.